live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today starts right now. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. I'm Grant Herm. And I'm Priya Man. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News today. I know we're both sticking around here in Metro Detroit yes. for the holiday weekend, yes. uh, but a lot of folks have travel plans this weekend. And the gas prices, mm -hmm. the, the airport and the flight travel right? stuff is, is a big headache today, but you know the one thing that isn't a headache. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Andrew, the, the weather, not a headache for folks this weekend. It's great for folks who are staying here and folks who are traveling right here to Motown and, and Southeast Michigan for everything the region has to offer. And we're offering excellent weather for today, and it continues much of the holiday weekend. We're looking at 50s and 60s this morning, warming up to 80 degrees by noontime. Low and middle 80s this afternoon right here in the city of Detroit. Highs between 84 and 86. We're looking at 60 degrees right now, cool and comfortable out there. Winds out of the southwest at around three miles per hour. If you are doing some traveling this morning out to the west, temps in the low 80s in places like Grand Rapids at 83, 72 in Gaylord, temps in the low and mid 70s from Traverse City over to Alpena and mostly sunny skies in those locations. Up in the UP, same sort of deal. High pressure overhead, nice stable air across the entire state. 60s closer to Lake Superior, Marquette at 69, Munising at around 63. But the farther south you are in uh, places like Escanaba, temperatures will be in the low 70s, near 70 degrees in Sault Ste. Marie. We'll talk more about Sunday and the 4th of July in moments. Remember, you can track temperatures, sky conditions, anything weather-wise in the great state of Michigan, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world with the Local Forecasters app. You can download it by scanning this QR code or head to your favorite apps, app store. The Local Forecasters app is free. Search WDIV. All right, thank you, Andrew. Time now is 702 and new this morning. An investigation is underway after a deadly crash involving a motorcycle. It happened on Seven Mile near Hayes on Detroit's east side. Police say the man on the motorcycle was not wearing a helmet when he and an SUV collided overnight. There's no word on the cause of this crash. And also new this morning, police in Detroit are trying to figure out what happened after a car is involved in this type of accident. It mm. happened overnight on Cass and Bagley near the Rosa Parks bus terminal. Now we do we do not know the circumstances surrounding this accident or if anybody was hurt. We'll keep you posted as we learn more this morning. Wild pictures, though. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Also making headlines, people traveling this holiday weekend may find navigating the land of the free is just getting more expensive. And if you are looking to fill your tank, here's where gas prices stand. AAA is reporting the average price for a gallon of gas in Michigan. Now at $4.96 a gallon in Metro Detroit, up about 10 cents there, 506 a gallon. That's 11 cents less, though, than we were paying this time last week. Even though there's a slight dip in prices, travelers are still facing challenges. The 4th of July is still a few days away, yet already too much for some to bear. I'm just staying home this holiday, yeah. Did the gas prices play into that? Well, I guess the entire economy play into that, yeah. The economy doesn't take a day off when many Americans get a three-day weekend, which means inflation doesn't give travelers a break. It's getting crazy. My car used to be $40 to fill up. Now it's $69.45. I'm over it. Gas prices have edged down this week. On Friday, 10 gallons of gas cost you an average of 90 cents less compared to last week. But those same 10 gallons cost you about $17.20 more than last year. That increase hits the 42 million people AAA expects to travel by car this weekend. 3.5 million flyers have even more worries. This week we had clear skies and we had over 700 cancellations. I, one of the flights I was on was canceled. Over 90% of those flights were attributed to not having a, a pilot connected to the flight deck. Fewer crews to fly more people. It's been extremely frustrating. Delta Airlines is allowing rebooking this holiday weekend for no fee or fare difference. Trying to get ahead of passenger volumes, it says haven't happened since before the pandemic. In an environment Delta CEO says they've never faced. A reminder that a nation ready to celebrate independence can't quite escape from health and economic realities. Travelers across the country continue to deal with high numbers of flight delays and cancellations. Here are the numbers. Nationwide, more than 600 flights are delayed and more than 400 flights are canceled. That's according to FlightAware, which tracks flights in real time. Here at home, there are 24 delays at Detroit Metro and eight flights have been canceled. Mm. And speaking of the holiday weekend, each year police departments are flooded with calls complaining about people lighting fireworks. So what exactly are the rules? Our Mar McDonald is taking a closer look. 
For some, the thrill of seeing a professional show is where it's at. Well, this is trip number two of three. There'll be one more tomorrow. For others, it's all about the backyard or the neighborhood block party, which Michigan state law says is perfectly permissible. The excitement of it, just in, in the awe of it going up. From June 29th through July 4th, it extends to July 5th if it falls on a Friday or a Saturday. And the timing's clear, 11 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. Usually we'll be, we're done and starting to clean up by then. But not everybody does, and local police departments will be getting deluged with calls. There's going to be fireworks going off all weekend long, and, and we have extra patrols specifically for that. It, it will be busy. The thing to remember, no matter what your community's local ordinance says about fireworks, on every other day of the year, state law overrides it 12 to 13 days out of the year around holidays. I actually didn't know that. And this is a biggie. You must light them off on private property. You cannot set off fireworks anywhere except for private property or private property that you have the permission of the, the owner to be on. You can't do it in church parking lots. You can't do it in the street. You can't do it on the sidewalk. It has to be private property. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Now, something else to consider. Sparklers are enormously popular with kids, but did you know that 50% of the fireworks-related injuries in the under-14 crowd come from those sparklers? Now, because of that, police are encouraging parents to keep an eye on your little ones. Uber just issued a new safety report that includes information on sexual assaults and misconduct. The number of complaints is down, but the report covers a time when a lot of people just weren't using ride shares. This new report covers the years 2019 and 2020. The company says it received more than 3,800 reports of assault and misconduct on its U.S. platform. That's a 38% decrease compared to 2017 and 18, but of course, the pandemic hit hard in 2020. Still, in 2020, Uber reported 141 rapes and 998 sexual assaults. So if you use the rideshare this weekend, remember to always have the driver confirm your name. Make sure the license plate matches the info on your phone and share your travel plans with someone you trust. We're tracking a key decision from the FDA that will impact when COVID booster shots could be available this fall. The FDA is asking vaccine manufacturers to produce shots that target the two most recent Omicron subvariants, BA4 and BA5. Now that likely means those newer shots won't be ready until October or November at the earliest. Omicron BA4 and BA5 are expected to cause the majority of COVID cases in the U.S. within a few weeks. Ultimately, those are the strains the FDA is selecting to update the vaccines for this fall. But it marks a setback for Moderna and Pfizer, who've already been producing and testing updated boosters that include BA1, the original strain of Omicron. Both manufacturers say those shots would have been ready this summer. Pending authorization, large-scale supply of a bivalent Omicron-containing vaccine could be available in late July and early August. EUA requirements were met for a vaccine update and we can supply an Omicron BA modified Mac vaccine now. Pfizer had begun initial work on a booster, including the newer strains. Moderna must now start a process that takes about three months. Both must provide safety data to the FDA before the updated boosters could be authorized. In the meantime, the head of Michigan Medicine is urging more people to get the protection that's available right now. We don't have enough people fully vaccinated, much less having received the full booster range that they're eligible for. And this is manifesting itself in a lot of ways. We continue to have a significant number of patients in our hospital who have COVID-19. Interestingly though, uh, those who are sick only have had, generally have only had their initial shot or no, no COVID-19 vaccination at all. Those who've been boosted usually don't have symptoms. Uh, they were admitted for another reason. The boosters being created for this fall will also protect against the original strain of COVID, much like flu shots protect against multiple strains of the flu.